everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it is Triple Play Day once again. So I am here with Natalie and Misty. And we have an awesome project for you today. Today we're featuring this house template. It's another Daisy and Grace template. It comes in several sizes, and we have all used different sizes to show you this. Yep. My project is this little house banner. It's so cute. Isn't it's it cute? Very cute. Really fun. So the fabric I use for this is called Bubby's Buttons and Blooms, and it is by Corey Turner Goodhart for Wyndham Fabrics, and it is just an adorable line. It is so cute, and it lends itself very well to what we're doing. Now, these templates are quilt-as-you-go method, mm -hmm. and it's like the one we did. Um, last year, we did one with hexagons, and she has all kinds of shapes, but the house one just, you know, it was just like, these little houses are so cute. And honestly, the smaller they get, the cuter they are. But I decided <laughs> to start with the big one, and so what we're making are these little houses right here. Now, one of the cool things we've done is we have the pre-cut batting, so you don't even have to cut out your batting, which makes it so much easier. It does, yeah. it does. Well, not really for me, because if I need batting cut, guess who does it for me? <laughs> Okay, true story. That's true well, story. I cut a lot for mom. She does. So <laughs> my shoulders aren't so great. So she does a lot. Of, if I need a lot of cutting done, she'll be like, I'll cut that for you. And, uh, and so I'm always happy to let her do that. So let's get right in on how to make one of these houses. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to point out on this um, first. And one is that I did need one long strip of fabric for this. It's actually two, two and a half inch jelly roll strips that I sewed together. And I'll be talking about that. My project was made out of a layer cake, but it doesn't use the whole thing, nor does it use the whole layer cake. So I'll talk a little more about that. Also, I sewed mine on because it was Bubby's buttons. <laughs> I used a button to attach my little house to the banner. And we are also going to give you a, uh, an alphabet so that if you want to write a special, a special message on yours, like uh, happy birthday or welcome or whatever, you can do that as well. So all these things are gonna be available to you and we'll talk more about them as we go along. So basically, we're gonna show you how to make this whole project mm -hmm. using the big house. And um, it's exactly the same for the other sizes, but the other girls have done different and fun things with theirs. So yeah. I think you're gonna really enjoy this. All right, so one of my favorite things to do with these houses is I'm cutting out, two, I'm using two fabrics for my house. So I'm using a background and I'm using a center for the house. And so the, the templates come apart like this and you're gonna, we're gonna use a background here. And Natalie, I'm gonna let you go ahead and cut that out okay. right there. And it is actually so much easier to do these if you have a spinning mat. Mm -hmm. It is, Or if you true. have like a little mat that you can just turn. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so we do actually have one. Do you want me to grab it? It's right here. Sure. It's like right under here. How convenient. How convenient. <laughs> Ta-da! And now Natalie can spin. Yay! There we go. I'm just gonna set this, scoop this up. It is handy. Now, if you have, like she said, any mat can be a rotating mat. Uh, you know, if you have a smaller mat, mm -hmm. just you turn just it. just pick it up and yeah. turn it. Just turn it and slide it. Anyway, she's going to cut that out. And while she's doing that, one of the things I love about these is that they're clear. So they enable you to fussy cut, which means you're going to put, get exactly what you want in the center of that little house block. Now, this line of fabric, particularly, I mean, you can see some of these different fabrics up here it really lends itself to fussy cutting. And so, um, so you this have this ready. one cut out and I'm gonna have you cut this one out as well because it's like- Right on the middle of that cute flower. Right on the middle of that flower. This fabric can is really adorable. Can you get adoring, an inside adorable. and outside from the same print? You can you get- can. You, Okay, you can. from the same 10 inch square. So yeah, see how the little, yeah. the little house fits, but then you'll have like this little extra bit up yeah. at the top. Okay, so, I was just curious. So actually what happened with that since you asked is that I got caught up making some tiny <laughs> little ones because I had this leftover fabric out here. Because she's obsessed. Yeah. yeah so. But look at this fabric. It's so cute. It has like follow I your heart, keep going, believe in yourself, all, yeah. all the leaves. And then the, the words are all these like cute little it's, it encouraging really sayings. Yeah. It's really cute. And, and like this one right here, you know, it looks almost like a little birdhouse because it has that little circle in the center right there. So cute. And, uh, and of course, I love words. And there's words, a lot of words on this. Um, fabric and it's just it's an adorable line for anything but I think Very uh, you happy. know when I saw that I got to use this I was just pretty excited about it all right so let's put this back down and so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, Misty do you want to make sure that iron's hot absolutely we're going to take our backing and we're going to put it pretty side down 
So right side down, and we're going to use this house template to line up our middle pieces. So we're gonna lay that on there. We're gonna put our house batting right in there like that. And then we're gonna put our little house right on the top. Now, what I like to do is I like to put a pin like through the center so it holds it. And then I can take this off and then I'm ready to fold. Now, just like the other template, you know, you're, you're going to start in one place and you're going to fold and you're going to fold up again like this and you're going to put a pin in there. Now, depending upon whether you're left or right handed um, is what direction you're going to go. So I'm going to turn mine and go this this direction right here. And um, now let's talk about these corners for a minute because we all did them a little differently. And I actually did mine half and half because I was trying to see what would work the best. Yeah. So if you just fold this in here like this and fold it over again, it makes a nice corner and all your, all your pieces are inside. Mm -hmm. You can also fold this over like this and make a little 45 and then fold it up like this and you'll, you'll have a little corner right there that meets. And if you want to miter them, you're gonna to wanna to do that before you do the that bottom. Is, that you? is the mitered corner, yeah. Oh, what I just did? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, because I also did them a third way then. You did. <laughs> I did, so what I did was I folded this up like this, oh, and that came up on here like this, and then oh, folded. Oh, you did your corners first. So yes, yeah, yeah. so, so, then, so then when it miters up, it's an actual, actual perfect miter. So okay. I think it just depends on whether or not well, and it's interesting because every time I started at the peak, I always start at the peak as well. And work down. Oh, that's every time. So I Me love too. it. So <laughs> that's actually one of my favorite things about um, doing these kinds of projects, especially with triple play, is that um, you just go around. It's funny too. Yeah. How we sit. We all sit and work in the same, the same room. room. <laughs> We're doing everything differently. <laughs> yeah. And we all actually show up many, many days wearing the same color. Uh, yeah. Without like, this planning. This is so it. not planned. By accident. <laughs> yes. By accident, totally. It was all a right. blue day. I know. <laughs> and all of us went into our closet like twenty times, going, "What should we wear? What should we wear?" <laughs> and then we come dressed alike, so uh, or coordinated at least. That's right. All right. So now I'm still going around here and. Uh, I'm up on this peak now. And the little the little angled edges miter all by themselves. They do. You they just miter have naturally. To do anything. <laughs> no, and uh, and they just go around. And so on this one, I did I did the same thing where I just folded it over like this. So does your top miter? Yes. Yeah. I'm... You mitered your top. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just just turn it in at a little forty five degree angle and, and then, then fold it fold over. And fold and you've got a nice got a little nice miter, little miter pointy top. There we go. All right, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to go all around this. Now, you'll notice these pins that we're using. These are called magic pins? I think they are I called think magic that's right. pins. Yeah. Magic gotta... pins, and we do love these for this project. And um, the reason is, is that the little ends are silicone, so you can iron them, and they don't melt. So that makes it really cool. You'll, you'll notice this is looking a little wonky, but once we get it together, we will be able to just press that, and it'll lay nice and flat. And I'm just going to put a pin in here. So I actually have done three different corners on this house. And at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. Ooh, Oops. You're right. oh, I got nine more of those fingers, so I'm okay. <laughs> Only hurt one. My poor children, I, they you're would come to me with a sore. And very I'd be like, tough. Yeah. You have nine more. You have nine more fingers. Don't stress. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of a tough mama. I still am a tough mama. I mean, I have some sympathy. I mean, let's be, say it, Natalie, please. Oh, she's very <laughs> sympathetic. <laughs> you sounded totally sincere. It's totally sincere. <laughs> All right. So now, oops, this one is like poking out, so we need to make oh, sure that's yeah. turned under. You want me to press it again? Yeah. I just want to make sure that we, once you press a little crease in there, then it's... It'll be stuck. Yeah. Yeah, press and it again. And that would bother me, that little dip in there, mm -hmm. so I think that'll be fine. But see how flat that came out after even after you pressed it. All right. So what I want to talk about is I took a bunch of these home and I hand sewed the edges down on these. And I just thought this would make a fun take along project. And so I wanted to see how it worked to hand sew. And so I have a little needle and thread here. And I just want to show you, um, actually I unfolded this. I came up through the, through the fold and brought my needle right out through the fold and, and that flipped hides it your down. Knot, right? It hides my knot. And then I'm just going to do the same stitch I do on the binding, which means wherever your thread comes out, you go right in and then you're going to come out and you're, 
come out the fold. So you go right in and you come out about a, about a I don't know, a little less than a quarter away. And, uh, and so the, it hides the stitch and that's, that's a, a binding stitch or a ladder stitch, not a ladder, a mm -mm. hidden stitch. Hidden stitch. So then the other thing was I wanted to try um, sewing them down. And so this one is sewn and I use this invisible thread. And the main reason I use the invisible thread is because I didn't want to change my thread for every color and I wanted to use the invisible thread. Now, now the old invisible thread used to be um, not so good. You know, like if you put your project in the dryer, it would melt or whatever. But this, <laughs> this is much better. If you haven't used, if you're like me and you used it once and it was like, the worst. <laughs> did you did you press that thread with the iron? I think I did because I pressed all of these. So with thread in them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah. So I think you so know. So it must be very heat resistant then. I think so. That's good. And so uh, so you know if you're like me and you know like a hundred years ago you know this stuff comes out and you try it and then you know it's not so great just know that technology takes care of a lot of that stuff and we move forward in the sewing world and we are we are way forward with this thread that's awesome excellent good to know all right good to know so the other thing is is that on this one i did a straight stitch and on this one i did a little zigzag now i found and on this one can you see here this see these are my mitered corners all the way around and this is a straight corner right here and you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever works best for you and, uh, and does it. So then I wanna show you, I just used a two and a half inch strip to attach my um, little houses to. And basically what I did was I ironed it in half like this. You want me to press? I'm just gonna show them okay. this, I think, because this is pretty easy and quick. And um, so I just, ironed it in half. Just finger press So it I first. had a, a line and then I folded it, my fabric into the line like this on both sides like this and then folded it in half like that and pressed it, pressed it down and just sewed a seam on, on the outside of it, you know, and so it's right, you can see my little seam on the outside of this. And then when I was, had that done and I actually sewed two pieces together and just straight stitched the ends, cut off my selvages and straight stitched the ends. And you could put as many oh yeah as many oh, yeah. strips together as you wanted so, you know if you wanted to decorate all around the house with these banners yes. so i it made so this cute. garland to fit the size of my um hanging my um, design wall at home because oh, i thought cute. it would be really, really cute, cute. Yeah. Yeah. and uh and so but if i you wanted it longer you obviously could do it longer now one of the things i want to talk about actually you are going to need to press That's one of these down because thought, i'm going to have to sew it i am so mm -hmm. um now I have a thing for buttons. She does. <laughs> like I have like so many buttons. So many buttons. <laughs> it was actually one of my favorite things to do as a kid was just dump out the button jar and look at all yes. the different and we would dump them colors out colors and sizes. And, and so you don't think I'm crazy. We dumped them out on cookie sheets so they didn't go everywhere. Oh, that's smart. And um, and so the kids and I would have them put like buttons together and. Um, I mean, I'm really good at keeping children busy and this was, this was fun, but there are so many different buttons and I do love old buttons and I do have a lot of old buttons. So to make this work, you're going to need buttons that have just two holes in them. And, um, and I picked different buttons on every single house because I love buttons and I love different buttons. And so for these, I, I tended to go for just the the two hold buttons like this, because I'm gonna show you how to sew these on using the sewing machine. Now, if you're gonna use a sewing machine to sew on a button, it's gotta have a zigzag stitch. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew side to side without moving forward. I do a lot of um, mending and it is so easy when you uh, sew a button on with a sewing machine. It's actually super life changing. And so I think this will be really fun for you to see and to watch and I'm going to put those buttons over there and I'm going to use this button but I'm going to find a darker house so you can actually see it and oh that one at the bottom is perfect this one yeah it's, yeah it's dark colored you can all right so I didn't measure where these went they're all eyeballed and they're all ready to go and I'm we're going to go ahead and sew on this strip right here all right the first part's pressed but yeah so so I'm going to have you just sew down the side of this. Okay. And honestly, we don't even have to sew the whole thing because I just want to show how to attach it. 
Okay. So Natalie's just sewing right along, you know, about an eighth or quarter of an inch from the edge of this down one side. Uh, and that's really all you need to do. Now, I want to point out something. If, if you're using invisible thread, you use regular thread on the bobbin. So like even on this house right here, the top invisible thread, the bottom regular thread. So your bobbin is going to, it's going to work much better for you. If you put, I was going to ask that. Yeah. If you put both in it, it's not a pretty sight. Yeah. I've <laughs> never used invisible thread. So yeah, is it I, thicker than regular thread or thinner? Uh, I actually don't know. Probably comes in weights just like normal thread. This says 250 millimeters, which I have no idea what that means, but you know. <laughs> that so. might be the length. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just don't, yeah, could be. I don't know. All right, that's enough of that. That's enough. Yeah. All right. There you go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is when I did my uh, banner and I chose the number I wanted, I, I put my first house on the in the center and I pinned them all before I sewed them down. Okay. But once I sewed them down, I sewed them down with a button and I just, literally eyeballed this and put it on put my uh you did them all three at the same time so through all three layers mm -hmm. yes yes oh, okay. i just did one thing now uh you can Treat do me. you can do all three i do and i want to uh, use a zigzag stitch that's going to be wide enough to go through here so when you do this what you're going to do is you're going to release your your little presser foot right here so we're going to take this off and then we're going to lay our our thing up our what do we call this back piece um, hanger thinger <laughs> uh the uh the banner holder the, the ribbon the ribbon <laughs> the house the do house you also need to drop your feet dogs no mm -mm. no For real yes no you don't because we're changing the fact that the foot only goes it's only going side to side the stitch isn't moving forward this is this regular zigzag and we're fixing the width, but we're not changing that it's go. It's not going forward. And so what we want to do is we want to come over okay. here to a number nine is a good little zigzag on here. Mm -hmm. And um, actually I'm going to go with eight, I think. And then what we want to do is we want to go to our length and we want to set it to zero. So get it as close as you can to zero. And then the top stitch is dependent upon how far apart your buttons are. So uh, what the, I do, yeah. I mean the, the little way, holes, the holes yeah. in the button. So what I do is I, um, I move this around until my needle goes right in that hole and I do one round by hand first. So then I'm gonna, see then it pops right over to come down the other side. And if it goes in there really easy with no problem, then I can just press on that presser foot and sew side to side and sew mm -hmm. a button on without. But if it had hit the button though, you would wanna change if, the width, right? Yes, so if it had, and it generally on this machine, it's 3.5 and I would say that's pretty standard, really? you know, okay. um, so. That's awesome. That is yeah, awesome. so then you just sew your buttons on like that and you just go across and I used all different kinds of buttons and it's just a really cool, neat little trick. Now, one more thing before I leave you, um, I also have a, um, an alphabet for you guys and numbers so that you could put letters on your banners. You know, I have, I have some right here. This, this is a P, this is the beginning of happy, like this, or appy, <laughs> depending on whether- I'm sure there's it, an H in there. I'm sure there is, there is an and H. there's a Y. Um, but oh, this, there, there the it is. So, so yeah, we can just lay this out here. So here's our H, A, P, P, Y. This is a, a free download, this, um, these printables right here. This is a free download, and they're already backwards. A lot of time when people do things with heat and bond, they forget that they have to reverse them for them to come out right. So when you trace them on, you know, you're just going to lay your heat and bond over here, trace the letters that you want, iron it onto your fabric, and then cut out whatever word you want. And this is birthday. This has birthday on it. But it would be just fun to have little messages on these That's and you really could do it cute. for holidays. I mean, how yeah. cute would a Halloween one be or a Christmas one or a welcome or, yeah, you know, that. fun to stick in a package to, you know, to ce celebrate. Like if you have a loved one's birthday far away, you could send a little thing like this. It just makes mm -hmm. it really cute. And I, I just love these little house blocks. I think they're so darling. All right. So that is my, um, my project and now we're gonna move on to who goes next i think natalie i'm gonna go next awesome well let me clean up this mess all right so for my project i used the three inch house template it looks like this it's a cute mm -hmm. little guy it's the middle 
middle size. That's right. And um, I use these woolly flannels, Desert Sunset by Bonnie Sullivan for Maywood Studios, and it is beautiful. It is so pretty, and I just love how thick and awesome it is yeah. in, a, in a pack. <laughs> uh, yeah, when it's you get in really a pack, pretty. it's like three times as thick. Yeah, it's so it's awesome. also pretty forgiving to do these quilt as you go houses because it doesn't get like super funky. It, it has like just a little bit of extra. I was curious if you thought it was more difficult, but you feel like I it, think it was easier. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it was pretty easy. Now on these house templates, can they, can they get these individually? You can get the house templates whichever size you want, mm -hmm. or you can buy a bundle of three. Oh, okay, awesome. that's or perfect. The two, three, the three, I got thinking about that. And yeah. we also have the smaller. Yes. And for batting. my projects, I made two things using the entire layer cake. And um, you would yes. need two packages of this if you were going to make both of them. And, the, and But these... they come in a count of 42. So right. you just kind of have to decide how big your project yeah. is going to be yeah. and Depending get the on batting what you're accordingly. Making. This is a really cute project. I really love it. Oh, I'm glad. It turned out really fun. So I feel like it would be it so easy so to like freshen up and cozy up your couch oh, gosh, for winter. Yeah, absolutely. So, but if Very you wanted good. to cut your own batting, you totally could using the template, the middle size template. Sorry, the inner house. The inner. Um, <laughs> yeah, but just just layer maybe two pieces, and if you wanted to go with four, because you're well. Super and honestly, brave. notice really notice how thin this batting is. I mean, yeah. this yeah. is not your this is not your thick batting. This is a right, nice but thin... this is this is four layers, and it's a lot to cut through. It is a right. lot to cut it's through. It's about oh, absolutely. I mean, it's almost a half an inch. Now, do you use a sixty inch blade? A sixty yeah. millimeter, yeah. Or would a sixty be, millimeter would be what I would recommend if you are doing four <laughs> layers of yes. batting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a good sharp but blade. I, Even with the 60. I, I think, think it's just it much more safer. pleasant to use two layers. Okay. Two layers, yeah. It's just easier. And she does cut most of those for us, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, good times, good times. But now we can buy them in a package. That's so right. That's, that's really handy for you. I'm pretty sure that was her idea. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a good one. It is it's a good, it's a good one. one. Okay, so because my template is three inches, I was able to get all four pieces out of one square. So I'll show you how I did that. I'm, I'm not actually going to cut. I'm just going to demo so you can see. So I folded it in half because it doesn't really matter there's no direction to this fabric. And uh, I got the f larger piece from down here and the smaller piece from up here. Oh, that's so perfect. I had perfect. I had completely even numbers. It was so great. Yeah. And then I just mixed and matched all the colors and lined well, it up. Well, that kind of takes all the guilt away because I felt a little guilty because I had like these whole pieces right. and I couldn't really throw them out. You know, you know what though? Those are great pieces to cut into little squares they and are. save for, for other projects. True, true. Project. So, okay, right. so I put mine together in the same way mom did. I mitered all the corners and, and stitched them down. I actually prefer to use a, um, a decorative stitch. And so like this is a feather stitch and then this one is just straight, but you I, could go either way. Yeah, I do love that. I just think the feather is so the pretty. The feather is it so is pretty. pretty, it adds a lot. Now, did you just choose like one color of blending thread or did you change your thread? I choose choose <laughs> choose one color okay because I didn't I don't want to keep changing it all the time right. and I think it doesn't take away it doesn't no. take away at so, all it just disappears it right just into disappears it. it's yeah. beautiful it's a little it's really bit pretty. of like a almost a taupe color I probably could have gone a little yeah. darker but I just used what I had so pretty. so I put mine together this is uh, the table runner that I made and I think it's pretty cute it actually almost looks to me like a spool of thread. That's what I was going to say. It totally does. <laughs> yeah, so it's just kind of a fun little thing you could use. And you can make this as now, long as you want. Did you get both of these projects out of that? Yes. Oh, awesome. Yep, Perfect. both projects. So you really could make a long table runner. You really could, you really could. yeah. Or you could make a wider, more square yeah. one. Um, and my pieces are put together kind of in a little zigzag shape. So I stitched these little lines and then added... So they go um, together like this. Whoops, let's use a different color. So there. did you stitch all these little short, these side seams first and make one row? You know, I, um, I kind of just added them as I went and I made this row and then this row separately. Oh, okay. So because you can't, you can't do like, well, you could. You could do all the little side seams and then join this section, you know, just like this. Yeah. But I, I ended up um, stacking my top row and my bottom row in little piles uh -huh. and then I did you know this is the top one and this is the bottom one and I just added to the row okay and you oh, did, okay oh, that's you did zigzag different first, brains though? different brains um I love that what do you mean the zigzag first like did you did you attach this way or did I you attached come in them and attach simultaneously them? so like so, so as she so, was going so along 
if I was doing this row, I started with these two pieces. Okay. And then I added this one and went up this way. Oh. And then I added this one and went down this way. Okay. And then that this is one so and fascinating. That, that is so awesome. So that way, that way it came together as a full row. Okay. And then I'm just joining rows to create this table runner. That is awesome. Yeah. That is cool. So then I had this table runner up there and, and, um, it actually, the pillow started out as a table runner and it was really long. And I thought that like, what would happen if I just rolled that around and made a pillow? So to do that, all I did is I made this table runner a little longer and I added, um, I had this piece on the side where you can see that it's, it goes together kind of like a puzzle. So this piece, this side sticks out and this side has the in, inward curve. Uh -huh. And yeah. when you pull them around, they go together like a little, it oh, like yeah. locks together, it like locks puzzle together. pieces. Yeah. So um, do you want to go ahead, would you mind sewing these pieces together so that I can show? No, I don't mind at all. Joining this center piece, because that is the trickiest part okay. about putting this pillow together. Okay. And then literally all the, the only Let's other see. thing I did was I stitched oh close the top and bottom after stuffing it with polyfill. So just a straight stitch. Super simple. It's well, so I, cute. I used the turkey. Oh, you did. You or, did. Yeah, yeah, I totally used the turkey stitch on the top it's and bottom. It's so cute. I just left a little, a little piece so I could stuff in all the polyfill I and then it, stitch Nat. that middle part closed. Now so my thread awesome. is... It went super easy. My thread is white, yeah, hold so it's going to like really show up. That's okay. And I've got the turkey stitch going here. Awesome. And I'm just going to sew these two together. The nice thing about this project too is that because all the shapes are different, you can assemble it in a multiple different ways. Yeah. So this this isn't exactly how I put the runner together, but having these two pieces fit in, we're just going to stitch from here to here and go around that little curve. All right, I will do that. Yeah, I love how we all come to it at a, from a different place. Yeah, yeah, I would have never thought to do this whole part No, together. I would have sold all the sides yeah. and then done a zigzag For sure. Top. Oh, funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I was asking. I yeah. was like, how'd you do it? <laughs> I just kind of did what felt natural yeah. and I wanted to like build out the whole row. Well, and once you said it, it makes perfect sense. It just, like yeah. Jenny said, it never occurred to me to do it that way. <laughs> I love it. Well, I can't wait to see how you did yours because your project oh, is going to be so cute. It's, it's pretty fun. She uses the tiny one. little one. So. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me turn this and come down this side and we'll have these two together. You notice I have to bite my lip when I'm doing this. <laughs> Extra focus. It's so scary. <laughs> it's not though, it goes really fast. All right. So that's okay. in there. All right, so now you can see, to me it, it kind of it kind of is like lock and key, right? Mm -hmm. Like it just fits. So we have this piece, I flipped it over. Don't look at all my seams. <laughs> And then we're just going to join this so you don't have, you don't really have side seams. Like nobody can tell oh, let's see where so it's, cool. um, oh yeah, look at the, show the pillow with yeah. no side seam. Yeah, that's cool. It, it just, goes wraps all just wraps around. around. And then you just like sewed right across the top. Yep. So I stitched this together using the turkey stitch and then I sewed the bottom closed. I did sew on, on the top, um, the Almost. sides a little bit while it was flat just to give myself like an opening to stuff. Yeah. So then I didn't have to hold the whole thing with stuffing in it because it's easier to close a small section than the entire that's top once cool. it's been stuffed. Yeah, so that's fun. super so cool. That is all I did. And I think that you guys so will we got, love it. I think it's just... We got a runner yep. and a pillow out of one pack. That's awesome. Yeah. So cute, Nat. Super Alrighty. cute. All right. Perfect. So, so now, now we'll watch. We'll see what Misty did that's with runners. Right. I can't wait. <laughs> Okay, so last up, I also made a table runner. This is my project and it uses Pure Delight by Melanie Collette for Riley Blake. I just used one pack of five inch squares and this is such it's so a cute. It's such a cute and happy line, isn't it? Yes, it's so bright. Ah, I really enjoyed working with it. And so you need, like I said, that one charm pack and then you'll need a yard and a quarter of background fabric. I used the same fabric for all of the outsides of my project and that's this cute pink and we just cut that down into four and three quarter inch strips um, to then cut out these background pieces and then you'll need two packs of the two inch pre-cut batting the little tiny the ones. little tiny houses <laughs> they're so, they cute. Are so, they're so cute. cute i mean look at this tiny template isn't it just adorable it's that's really so, cute it's so adorable. cute and so then let me see here 
I, I want to show you how I cut out my insides because I did get three houses inside pieces from each charm. So I had one here, one right next to it, and then I was able to turn and get a third okay. from the side. And I did it that way. This and then all your background is from the is, yardage. It's from the yardage, awesome. exactly. So smart. And so I felt like that was still a really good use of this fabric. I didn't have a ton of waste. And then I just kept light colors together when I put all of my pieces together and I actually assembled them into pluses. So I've got some here. Here's my little individual houses and I just put them together like oh, so. They're so, so cute. cute. They're so, so cute. And you know, someone said, oh, those would be fun coasters, which I think is a great idea. And if you use a bigger one, I think it kind of even makes like a bowl cozy, you oh, know, nice. if you use oh, one of the larger, cool. you, could yeah. like, you could like put them yeah. up. Yeah, well, and even, yes, yeah, you know, even sew if these you, together. No exactly. way, dude, you could make a little box. Yeah. Oh yeah, you could make a little box. A little box. That's awesome. Yeah, a little storage okay. cube. Okay, coming up next. Yeah. Fabric <laughs> storage next cubes project. using the house template. So many ideas. But anyway, to <laughs> make, so it's so fun. And so then to make this runner, I just assembled it in three rows um, of seven pluses and it was I just put them together just like this one after the other and so I zigzagged in between each plus until I had seven and then I just layered three rows together and did a long zigzag to assemble those rows and it came nice. together super easy the smaller ones do take a little bit more time just because you're working with smaller pieces sure, just a little more fidgety yeah fidgety. They, they can be but I mean I think they still turned out super cute. I did match my thread to my background color, and this is the Missouri Star, I believe it's Bright Azalea, that matches this background print. And I used a little bit smaller pins than yeah. Jenny used because I had a smaller side to work yeah. with. It's so cute But it came though. together really great, and I think it is super fun. And I love that you could actually make this a little bit longer. I didn't use all the pieces that I got from my charm pack. These are all extra i just stopped once i got through two of the pre-cut packages so <laughs> makes sense you could keep going <laughs> yeah it's really so. cute and again you can fussy cut exactly you know the little blooms yes. and things like that so exactly you get fussy the cutting things with these that you tools want. is such a it's good idea. really yeah. great idea well especially if you have a fabric that lends itself to it you know yeah it makes uh, a lot of it's sense just, it's just really really cute well and i started thinking about the little houses you make where you have the people in the door uh -huh. even to have like little people yeah. would be so cute <laughs> that would be so adorable cute. any of those novelty prints would yes. be great yeah. would be really fun well and actually that's kind of interesting to think about because if you if you know if you were put these together and these sides were, uh, or these sides, one of them were like background fabric. Yeah. You'd have rows of houses, you know, that looked like oh, little interesting. houses up, upside and down, you know. That's a great idea. And, yeah. Uh, There's really so many things you can do is. with it. And I hope mm -hmm. you guys have enjoyed this. It was fun to, to have another chance to play with these Quilt As You Go templates. So yeah. The Quilt As You Go is really handy. It's, it's and really I love great. that we've done the batting for it. That's been super helpful. Absolutely. And I do love how, you know, you have some zigzags on here. And I do love how that when you use the matching thread it just completely it disappears. Just disappears so it's like invisible thread only not only not exactly <laughs> only it works <laughs> exactly this turned out so cute it i just, just really did. love it i love it too so, yeah. i love them all so, i love them the too. little banner and that you got your yeah, pillow let's show them off yep i have a pillow oh, <laughs> they're so runner. cute and they're quick and easy projects and we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the quilt as you go house template by daisy and grace from missouri star quilt company see you later bye, bye. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.